This is Sarah's brand new DT Ram 1500. Welcome back to another episode of Patriot Garage, guys. I'm standing here with my wife's car. Yes, this is Sarah's brand new DT Ram 1500. Now, you remember the biggest, one of the biggest builds that we ever did, which was Sarah's uh, 1500 DS model. So the DS Ram, we might do a quick uh, flashback there just to remind everybody on where we're kind of going to go with this episode today, because I'm going to show you the big differences uh, between the DS and the DT model Ram 1500. So let's quickly uh, take a look at Sarah's last build. Me and Mia kind of organised up a gift for you. <laughs> Come on, keep coming. Keep coming. No. Are you ready? No way. Did you see it? No Hit the lights, man. Oh my God. Surprise. <laughs> no. You got your own ram. This truck can do anything those trucks can do. Go, 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 go. Skull dragging the big Hemi all the way up there. Go, stop, go, stop. <laughs> there is no substitute for power. How was that? You hear that? So you can see there that um, DS truck. That was, look, I really kind of sold that thing out from underneath that, to be perfectly honest with you. I wanted her to get into the new Ram. I like keeping the cars uh, turned over and keeping them freshly updated. But I'll be perfectly honest with you, there's still not a day that goes past that Sarah doesn't give me some sort of comment about getting how much she regrets getting rid of that car. Sarah loves having the big lifted 35 inch tire, supercharged, P cord out. She loves she loves that thing because it's so unexpected from a from a soccer mum at the end of the day. We just got that car really set up to exactly where she wanted it, and then I got rid of that and I ordered the brand new DT. Kind of surprised her with this thing. So where are we? Gold Coast Ram, Australia's largest Ram dealership. There it is, I can see it. Oh, I miss here we, it. Here we go, I saw it. <laughs> you sad? My baby. Look what's there. Is the, that not sad? the sexiest car? Look at that car. That was the sexiest car. Was the car. sexiest, what's the new sexiest car? The new one's gonna be bigger, badder, faster. Okay. You, you'll be, you'll be right. How are you, how are you feeling? <laughs> is there nothing better than that feeling? Uh, of new just, smell. just brand new. What are your first thoughts on it? Oh, I can't believe how different it is from the last one. Congratulations, girl. Thank you. You deserve it. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> Looking good. Now, what's about to happen? So the reason that we're doing the Patriot Garage on this thing in its standard form is because I'm going to give you a comparison. We're about to commence a massive build on this truck. Maybe not to the extent of the last one that we built for it, but I'm going to give you a little bit of first person perspective. Now, we're going to try and get her in the garage. She's tied up in the office at the moment. She's got a lot of meetings going on. She's going to try and drop in later on uh, in this episode. So keep an eye out and we'll get her perspective, but I'll do all the technical stuff um, for her, right? Biggest thing that you're gonna not, uh, notice, first of all, is the new look of the DT Ram, and it is completely uh, a new look. You can see the front end has changed quite substantially. The drivability of this thing, I can't be very, very fair because Sarah's uh, DS model, we never drove that standard. So I can't give you a real world comparison between a standard DS model and a, st and a standard DT model. But what I can tell you is, is, is what I know from driving this around and I, I steal this quite regularly. You know, I drive it to and from work and, and take it on the weekends whenever I get the opportunity. The ride of this thing uh, compared to the last model is substantially different and again, not a real comparison because Sarah's was on custom suspension and 35s, but you can feel it in really every aspect. So let's do our, our typical thing. Let's go for a walk around. I'll, I'll show you uh, all of the features, um, the things that I can point out. 
So this is the Laramie variant. Um, you can also buy limited. Now for this truck here, we are going to town on it, right? So this is going to have the full P-Core works. It's going to have roof rack, bull bars. We've got really cool surprise coming with suspension. So if I was going to leave this thing standard, 100% I would have bought the Limited because you get the air suspension. So you've got the adjustability and the ride quality there with the air suspension. You also get Ram Box on the Limited, plus a lot of other different trim changes. But once again, for this build, we're going to town on suspension, didn't want the full air. We're removing the tub, uh, we're putting on a peak or tray, didn't want the tub. So it didn't really make sense for us to spend the extra money and, uh, and get one of the limiteds. But if you were gonna leave it standard, I think there's a lot of value for money in the limited. So definitely check that out. A really cool feature um, for the new models as well is they come now with a Ram electronic sidestep. So you don't have to add that as an accessory anymore, um, which was something that we did standard on every single Ram build that we've ever done. Um, so that was really handy. Coming down the back, if, you, if you're looking at a comparison um, between a 1500 and a 2500, a couple of differences that you might want to point out besides engine. And look, you really got to consider what you're going to be doing with your Ram, right? If you're really into hard work, heavy hauling, can't beat a 2500, can't go past it. If you're looking for weekend warrior, general sort of tradie, don't need big towing capacity, um, I'd go 1500 all day. If it was a daily driver that you're looking uh, at buying, and the reasons for that is, five foot seven tub on these compared to a six foot four, so they are a little bit uh, shorter than a 2500. Parking this is no different to parking a Land Cruiser or a Patrol, exactly the same. I've owned them all. Um, Sarah came out of a 200 series five years ago. She drives this absolutely everywhere, school car parks, shopping centers, wherever you want to go. If your hesitation is, oh, it looks like a, you know, it looks like a big truck, it's actually not. Standard, it comes with the tonneau cover um, on top. If I had the remote control on me, you can uh, click a button on the remote control. I don't, it's in the cab and the tailgate will drop down. So you've got really easy access, but even for Sarah doing all the shopping, all that sort of stuff, the tonneau's come in really handy because she does kids' school bags and you know, when she's going down the beach or you know, taking the dog, she puts all the dog stuff in the, in the back here. Um, comes with a nice lining. It is a huge size uh, tray. So as a workhorse, um, you can't beat a full size truck. Everybody loves that just the extra carrying capacity, you know, the extra load capacity. You are driving a, a bigger vehicle, and once you, this will take you one day to get used to driving it. You come out of a standard dual cab into this, you won't even notice it by the end of the day. All of the features are there um, as far as driver assist goes as well, which we'll get into um, in just a second. Four and a half ton towing capacity, huge towing capacity. What do you need any more than four and a half tons for if you need to be towing around that? Well, you probably need to be considering a 2500 anyway. Now they've changed up the Hemi uh, for 2021 and they've got an eTalk. You'll see the eTalk badge on the side. I've done a fair bit of research. Um, I'm not an engineer, but I've done a lot of research on what the eTalk is actually about. And I started doing all of that research because the first plan for this thing was to ring up the team at Harrop, get another supercharger. She loved the power. Unfortunately, supercharger uh, at this point in time has not been developed and probably won't be developed for this motor. I'm gonna run you through off the bat um, the biggest change uh, that they've done as far as the configuration goes, which is this eTalk generator that you see right here. And I'll give you through my understanding on, on what the eTalk is all about. So basically the eTalk replaces uh, your standard alternator. And what it's doing is it's, it's a power generator. It's a DC to DC charger. There's a bank of 48 volt batteries behind the back seat. So as the engine's running, as you're accelerating, and even as you're braking, that DC to DC charger is generating power and sending that to the back to the bank of, I think they're lithium batteries into that 48 volt system. So the number one thing behind that is, is the fuel economy and the fuel efficiency. So this will shut the engine down when you come to a stop, like some other modern day cars. So what happens is when the car shuts down, all of that power that's being generated into that battery bank, 
When you when you go to take off again and you hit the throttle, it's got a belt that's running from the e-torque that goes directly to the crank. And what it's doing is it's sending 90 foot pounds of power directly to the crank and it's firing the engine back up, obviously not on the starter motor. You've, you might have been in some of the older variants or some of the new variants, you know, when you, you hit the pedal and you can hear the starter motor go kick, 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 and the thing kind of jolts off and, and takes off and it's it's really annoying. I just want to get it going and then we'll have the race. Oh, come on, put your back into it. <laughs> With this thing here, you do not feel the vehicle stop or starting because it's sending the power directly to the, the crank. So it's starting the motor, not off a flywheel, it's starting the motor directly off the crank and you don't even notice. Big advantage with this thing as well, and I don't actually understand how they've done it, but one of the things I've noticed is the air conditioning doesn't turn off. So if you've been in a vehicle before where, you know, it's it stops at a set of lights, the air conditioning intermittently goes hot. It stops working because obviously the compressor for the air con's not turning. Um, they've overcome that problem with this system as well. So the technology is, it's, look, they obviously still want to keep the heart of what you buy a Hemi for, right? It is a Hemi. So you want that V8, that raw power. Oh. <laughs> oh, go the Hemi! <laughs> Good. Yeah, baby. And you still get that, but you're getting all the advantage of the modern uh, of the modern day electrics. It has uh, some of the other uh, fuel economy features as well, so it'll cut four cylinders out. Say you're on the highway and you're outside of that power band, it'll start dropping the cylinders out, and ultimately it runs on a four cylinder. But a big thing uh, with this as well. It's identical power and torque to the last model, to the DS model. So you run 291 kilowatts and 556 newton meters of torque. Half the amount of torque of the 2500, which is definitely noticeable, but once again, when that e-torque, that electric generator kicks in off the line, it is, it's, it's unbelievable. It feels like it's got a lot more power than it actually does down low. So I suppose that's about a walk around the outside um, of the 1500. Uh, let's jump inside and I'll show you the biggest change for, for the Ram Trucks Australia here in 2021, which is definitely the interior of these things. Um, they are just next level. So let's jump in there and let's, um, let's take a look. First thing you'll notice when you get inside here is you've got an actual center console in the 1500. The center console in this thing is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous to be perfectly honest with you. And ridiculous in a good way. It is massive. The amount of gear that you can fit in here. Um, the center console here, you've got this movable tray. Uh, you've got phone holders. It's the little things that make all the difference. So your iPhone fits perfectly in here or whatever phone that you have. Really weird, I don't understand why, but you've got all of this mathematical equation stuff on the back of the console. Maybe it's just something quirky that Ram come up with. You've got hypotenuse charts, how to work out hypotenuse. You've got some trig ratios there as well and some Pythagorean theorem. I finished school in grade 10. Anyway, I don't get all of that stuff. Um, oh, that's a good one. Standard metric wrench conversion chart. That is actually a really handy one. That's something that I should probably show Steve so he stops rounding off all the bolts when he works on the American cars. Um, you got another, another bit of console here, cup holders back in there. Um, you've got wireless charging for your phones in here as well. All of your USBs are really uh, handy. You've got Apple CarPlay in all of these, standard rear view mirror, all your soft touch buttons, so all the stuff that you want to, you, that you need really quick access to. Uh, again, something that took me a couple of days to discover. You know, I want to turn the fan down. For the first couple of days, I'm like, right, where is it? Controls, climate, there's, it's all here. Like everything that you need is exactly where you need it on the soft touch buttons. Now coming through all the controls, you've got all of the controls, all the functionality that you'll need right here at your fingertips on the steering wheel. Now cruise control, adaptive radar, lane uh, change departure. You've got all of the safety stuff that you can possibly want. You've also got automatic braking there on your front and rear parking sensors. So if you're coming, if you're reversing into something, say someone steps behind the car, the car will automatically brake for you. Now that in the right situation, that could definitely be a life-saving feature. So I think for young kids, um, amazing feature, really, really cool feature. Um, you've got an electric control here. On the 2500, I've got a big column shift. You've got a nice little electric control here, little bezel to switch between your gears. And then you've got your different four-wheel drive mode settings here. 
Now, the new braking system, the new trailer brakes are uh, coupled with the safety assist. Look, I, I would typically recommend uh, to anybody, even if you did have an electric brake controller, and my early model Rams, I did put Red Arc Tow Pros in there. For these ones here, they do have a smart system that's integrated into the brake controller. So when you deconnect the trailer, you have the ability to set up exactly what you're towing, what the length is, um, and all of your safety features, your radar, your lane departure, everything will compensate for that trailer being on the back, which is, again, it, it's something that once you've used it, you, you really wouldn't do without it. For me, if I'm towing the trophy truck, and even I'll tow the trophy truck behind this thing, no problems, we are under the four and a half tons, and, and this is very capable and very stable uh, to tow that vehicle. You know, especially when you're changing lanes and you are in traffic, uh, your lane departure will sense um, where the proximity of that car is compensating for a trailer being behind, which is which is awesome. Uh, the biggest change that you're gonna notice on the interior is definitely uh, this 12 inch screen. The advantage with this system here is you can control everything. So say for example, and I've done it a few times on my car, the auto lights off setting, something just as simple as that. And it's the same with everything that is electronically controlled in the car. Big feature in these that, um, that Sarah uses a lot is the heated seats and heated steering wheel. Um, obviously air conditioned on the seats as, as well. Um, I think that's about it for the front. Let's, um, let's jump in the back and I'll give you a, a quick run through uh, what's going on behind the front seats. <laughs> Uh, the cab size. Cab size is exactly the same as the 2500, as far as I'm aware. I, th I think they're actually identical. Um, they definitely feel identical. The width is exactly the same, so they're a two metre wide, which is where you get a lot of the room from. How ridiculous is this? Look, look how much room there is inside here. You can sleep across the back here, and I have done it before. Ram bins, again, storage, storage, storage. You know, US trucks are, are just all about storage. There's storage everywhere. Um, you've got little lashing points as well. So you can put stuff in the back and tie down, a feature that I had definitely have used before. Um, you've got more storage, you know, in here as well. Oh, that's a neat little product. That's something that I've put in every one of the family's cars now. So the kids have one of these. Actually, I'll quickly show you. It's a little personal locator beacon from GMA. Um, brand new product from GMA. Check him out. My kids all have one in the car. Sarah has one in the car now. Uh, any life or death situation, you can't get phone reception, or even if you can, pull the pin on this thing, the authorities will be there in uh, in two seconds flat. So that's a pretty cool little feature. Uh, I've got a Dometic jump starter pack in there as well, which I normally put them in, in most of the cars. The kids have tendencies to leave stereo systems pumping and run batteries flat. And actually I'll drop in there this thing here, 900 watt Harman Kardon sound system off its head. Like unbel absolutely unbelievable. There must be subs in there somewhere. I don't know where they are, but the stereo system in this thing, if you want to have a party, Buy Ram 1500, actually even the 2500's got a crank in stereo as well. Um, something that they definitely got right. So let me just put these down. You can see how much room there is in here, it's ridiculous. Does this little thing fold down? Yeah, it does. There you go. Just learned something new. Look, more storage again. Cup holders, USBs um, in here, air conditioning controls are there. Heated seats in the back as well. There's, there's something I didn't know, I just learned that. So your passengers in the back have, have got heated seats. Um, you got more points here, for kids' car seats, whatever. I'll just close this door. That's Sarah's seating position, and this is just, you want to cruise around, it's like being in a limo, like you're in the back of a Maybach Benz or something like that. It's, it's like, they're just, they really are that comfortable, they're unbelievable. A feature that I think is really, really unbelievable, um, not unbelievable. 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 Not unbelievable, but very clever microphones and speakers for your Bluetooth system in your car are at every single person that's inside the car. If you're having a family chat on the way, and we do it on the long trips, me and the boys might be away, and uh, Sarah and Maya are back at home, or vice versa, and, you know, we can chat for an hour or so on the phone and everybody gets to get involved in the conversation and they can hear what's going on. Look, how do I sum this up? If you were to ask me, what's, which one, which one is the truck? Is it a 1500 or a 2500? Or I'm looking at buying a dual cab ute, what do I buy? Look, hands down, you know where I'm at. I think we built probably the first 
proper touring American truck here in Australia, um, which was the black Super M, and I haven't looked back. You know, I, I bought one in the United States before uh, I built that truck and I fell in love with my Ram over there. I'm still in love with my Ram now. Yes, they are a little bit more expensive than your, your typical dual cab ute, but what you get over a typical dual cab ute, horses for courses, the value in the 1500 uh, Ram truck, Laramie or even Limited, I don't think you can go past it. So get back to that question, 1500 or 2500. Look, I'll, I'll put it back down to this and I've said it throughout the video. If you're looking for a daily, you're a weekend warrior, you're a tradie, that you need a ute um, for a specific purpose during the week and you might go and use it on the trip, you know, once a month or every couple of months, well, I think hands down it's got to be the 1500. It's a much more drivable car. The power delivery is a lot better in the 1500 to the 2500, again, as a daily driver. It's not a diesel, it's a petrol motor, so it's much, much smoother, it's much, much quieter. And with the e-torque in this thing, um, you get a lot of the features of a modern hybrid vehicle without having to tell everybody that you drive a Prius. You know what I mean? So I, I think if that's what you're looking for, you cannot go past the, the 1500. Why a Ram truck is a question that I'll get asked a lot, right? Why a Ram? Why not one of the other American trucks? That is the easiest answer that I could possibly give anybody. Ram Trucks Australia now are embedded into Australia. They have a dealership in every capital city and then some. Parts availability, service availability, resale, massive, massive uh, consideration. These are not low volume imports. These are a federally complied vehicle like any other high volume import that's coming into the country. They're remanufactured right here in Australia. So the Rams are coming out of the United States, down south, down in Melbourne. They have a massive facility down there, which is a proper automotive facility. They pretty much take this thing back down to the chassis. It's not a cut and shut job on the dash, say for example. It is a brand new molded dash, new wiring looms, all of the parts specific for Australia, as if Ram trucks in the United States were building it um, for this market. Um, so the accreditation that they have, they are the only authorised Australian distributor of the Ram truck. And to me, that's a, that's a no-brainer for all of those um, reasons that I just mentioned. My voice is hurting. I feel like I can talk about, you see how passionate I am about Rams? Ram trucks, you can't look past them. If you are in Australia now and you have a hesitation that it's, oh, it's a Ram, it's an American truck, it's not proven, well, you've, you've, uh, you've been living under a rock because the Ram truck here right now in Australia, this is the truck to own. Um, they are getting more and more common, they're getting more popular and for all of the reasons that I've discussed in this video. So make sure you get into one of your local Ram uh, dealerships, go and check out the new 1500. But I think just as importantly, uh, this, is, this video is to explain to you guys what a standard DT Ram is all about and what our experience has been with it. But make sure you stay tuned because coming up on Patriot Games, on the, on the next part of the series of Patriot Games, you're going to see this thing get transformed into an off-road touring monster. Uh, we're doing some things that we've never done before um, on builds. I'm very, very excited to see how this goes compared um, to the last one. But look, like everything, the evolution of the truck has come so much further. Um, and I think the evolution of the build that we're about to uh, commence on for my wife is, um, is gonna be a very, very cool project. And I'm, and I'm super keen to see the outcome. I know she's gonna love it just as much as the last one. And that might take some of the bitterness away that now she's driving a standard car, not driving a big, big super tourer. So that's it guys, the Ram DT 1500. I hope this has answered some of your questions. <laughs> you missed it. Oops. You missed the whole thing. It looks nice and clean. I just done the whole walk around on your RAM. And how'd you go? I'm not doing it again. Did you go through all the features? I went through absolutely everything. Mm. Anyway, you, you're here. Mm -hmm. Top three things you love about the new RAM compared to the other one? Um, the interior, definitely. Um, the whole interior, the dash, everything. It's yep. um, a lot more modern, user friendly. Yep. Uh, really I did. That. I spoke about how you didn't like it to start with, the new dash. Well, it was just so different to use. We had all the touch screens. Instead of not having and... just a button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you want to do something fast, but then, you know, 
once you get used to it, yeah. you figure out it's actually not that hard. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's really cool. Oh, side steps as standard. That was pretty cool. Yep. So yeah. the electric side steps as standard. Okay. What do you think of the power? I mean, the speed's definitely different. I'm not used to that. Told you. Um, I, I kind of do have a lead foot. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it still goes really good. I'm just used to something that kind of goes really fast. Mm. So I cannot pull this into a car park straight on. Yep. Like head first. Yep. Um, reversing, no drama. The cameras are amazing. You can get into any space. So it looks big, but it's not really much bigger than a 200. There's that many cameras. It, yeah. I mean, if you hit something, there'd have to be something. Well, wrong. actually, I didn't touch on this, but yours is. Is this the yeah? And that's got so this is the same as my yeah. twenty five hundred. You got the full the three sixty view. Yeah, yeah. So when you Head pull view. into a car park, you've got like it's like you get a bird's eye view mm. and you can see all angles of the yeah. car. Okay. Yeah. Modifications. Are you excited for the build or would you rather leave it like this oh, now? I'm so excited for the build. <laughs> Again, I told you. I'm not a standard woman. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's uh, that's for sure. <laughs> that's definitely for sure. Uh, I really, really, I'm excited for a canopy. Um, kids' school bags, groceries, things like that. At the moment, I do lift the seats at the back and put the groceries in the back seat because if you put them in the tray, I don't have the divider. I'd definitely get that if you're using the tray. Which you get with a RAM box. So, yeah. again, another reason to go with a limited. Um, with a RAM box, you do get the divider that you can kind of, you just slide up and down. So, I think we'll wrap it up there. I've probably spoken about everything. Um, I missed it. Would you recommend this to one of your friends as a mum's car? I already do. I've 100%. spoken about the tradies and all the rest of it. Yep. But as a mum's daily? Oh, definitely, definitely. It's it's not big. Once you get in there, I mean, it is like driving a couch, but that's also a good thing. Yeah. Um, but it, it's not hard to drive, um, easy to park. There's nothing really I don't like about it. And you're definitely the coolest mum at school when you rock up in a blacked out. Oof. 1500 gram. They love it. All right, we're going to finish up there. <laughs> Stay tuned uh, for one of the episodes of Patriot Games. It's going to be coming fairly soon, I think, within the next few months because we have to get this thing built for yes. some a plan that we have oh, for the upcoming season of Patriot Games mm -hmm. where you're going to really see what a Ram 1500 is capable I'm of. I'm excited. All right, and thanks, everyone. Round of applause for Sarah for joining us. Hey! Round of applause. Thanks for gracing us with your presence. <laughs> no drama. All Back right. to work. <laughs> we'll see you on the next episode of Patriot Garage or Patriot Games.